Hello friends. In this video, we'll see how to integrate Spring Boot application with AWS, SQS and SNS. We'll use something called as local stack and we'll use Spring Cloud AWS 3.1.0. So let's get started. So this is the official documentation page of local stack. A lot of times what happens is in the organization, the infrastructure teams are busy building the infrastructure for us. But at the same time, parallelly, we can start coding our application. And while the infrastructure is getting built, we need something to test the integration of the app with the AWS services. That's where local stack comes in handy. So as I said, this is the documentation page. Here is a list of all AWS services that local stack supports. It's a big, big list here. So it covers majority of the AWS services. But in this video, we'll be focusing on SNS and SQS, which is simple notification service and simple queue service. Now, before we dive into integration, let's see how to install local stack. So in the getting started section, we'll go to installation. Here you'll see step-by-step -step instructions for different kind of machines like Mac, Linux, Windows, and others. But for this video, we'll specifically target Docker. So we'll see how to install local stack using Docker desktop, which I've already installed on my machine. So if I click here, so here's the step for running the local stack on Docker. Note that there's a pro version as well, which has a different image. And this is a paid version, but we'll stick to the community version for this uh, demo. So let me copy this command and run it on my Docker desktop. Just to confirm nothing is running currently, I'll do a Docker PS. So there's no container running. And now let me paste the command. But as you note here, there's no tag specified for the image. So I'll pick the latest tag which is available as of the recording of this video, which is 3.1.0. As you see, the local stack is coming up. Now, if you notice, there's no shell given to us, right? So we can't type in any command here as such. So let me do one thing. Let me kill this and let me start the Docker in a detached mode so that we can get into the container and run the AWS local command. So all I'll do is add an extra flag here, which is dash D, which will prompt me a command prompt. As you see, we are at a command prompt now. So if I do Docker PS, it's showing me the container ID here. So let me get into the container using Docker exec dash IT and then bash the command to run. So now we are inside the local stack environment, right? So let's go back to the documentation and check the user guide for the SQS and SNS. So here they have given a bunch of example commands, like for example, for SQS, how do we create a queue, right? So for example, let's run this. So let me run this command AWS local SQS create queue and the queue name is local stack dash queue. You see it returned a queue URL, which means it created the queue and returned the URL of the queue. Now we can try to list the queues and see whether we get the response of the newly created queue. So as you see in the output, it's giving us the newly created queue URL as well. So. And now let's say we want to delete the queue, right? So instead of create queue, I'll say delete queue. Something went wrong. Okay, for the delete queue, it expects the queue URL and not the name. So what we'll do is we'll provide the URL which it printed in the output above. And there you go, it deleted. So if we do once again list queues, it should not show any queue now. There you go. So that's how simple using a local stack is. Now let's see how to integrate it with a Spring Boot application using Spring Cloud AWS. So here is the official documentation page for Spring Cloud AWS. If we click on SQS, it will take us to the SQS integration page. Now here is the Maven dependency that we need to add which is Spring Cloud AWS Starter SQS. Let's go to our IntelliJ 
and check out the Maven form.xml. So here I'm using 3.2.2 Spring Boot, and then I'm using Java version 17. This is the standard Spring Boot starter and Spring Boot starter web dependency. Now here's the SQS uh, Spring Cloud AWS starter SQS dependency where the group ID is IO AWS Spring Cloud as shown in the documentation here. Now there's similar dependency for SNS as well, uh, which is Spring Cloud AWS starter SNS. So I've added both these. Uh, let's check uh, the source code now. Go to SRC main Java. So local stack demo application is the standard runnable application for Spring Boot. Now I have a controller and a model here. Now in order to publish messages, uh, instead of using a string message, I wanted to show you a POJO where we can you know publish a message which is a POJO of type employee, right? Which has a ID, first name, last name, email ID, etc. And there's a controller which basically exposes a couple of services. Um, so here's the demo controller. Uh, one service is exposed at the URL send SQS message. There's another one which publishes uh, SNS notifications. So we'll cover both these scenarios. And again, if we go back to the documentation here, how do we listen, right? How do we listen to the SQS queue? So it's really simple. All you need to have a method defined and annotate it with at SQS listener with the name of the queue that you want to listen to and the type of the message. So in this example here, they have given a basic string message, but in our example, so here, I have a method called listen, with, which is annotated at SQL, SQS listener, and the name of the queue that I'm listening to is my queue, and the type of message that will be published here is of type employee. Now, as soon as this listener listens to the queue and sees that there's a new message published, it will log an info and print out what that uh, message was. Now, this was about listening to the SQS queue, but how do we publish a message? Right? How do we send a message to the SQS queue? So let's take a look at the send message here. So first I'm creating an employee object here. It's a random employee with a random ID, random name, random email ID. Then I'm using SQS template. So Spring Cloud AWS provides this SQS template, which can be used to send messages to the SQS queue. And there's a similar SNS template for integrating with SNS service as well. So we'll take a look at both of these. So in the send message, once we have the employee object, all we need to do is SQS template dot send and we specify which queue in this case it's my dash queue and then we specify what payload we want to send so in this case it's the employee object itself and then it's simply returning saying message sent to SQS which is the employee object now similar concept for the SNS as well here also we are creating the employee object first and then using SNS template we send a notification to the topic named my topic and then we send, send the notification of type employee. And then re we return a simple message saying we published to the SNS topic with the employee object. Now, the way we are going to set up the SNS topic is we'll have a subscriber, which is nothing but an SQS queue. This is called as a fan out model, where basically if a application publishes a notification to SNS, SNS will internally publish or send that message to an SQS queue, which is a subscriber. So imagine there are 10 different applications which want to listen to a notification which your application sends, right? So your app doesn't need to you know, keep on sending 10 different messages to 10 different queues. So you can set up one particular SNS topic and you can have all those 10 dependent applications subscribe to these SNS uh, using SQS queues. Now, as soon as your application publishes a message to SNS, SNS will internally send a message to all those SQS queues which are subscribed. And then all those 10 applications can individually listen to those SQS queues and process it according to the logic they want. So yeah, uh, before we start, let's set up these queues and SNS topics in our local stack. So I'm back to the terminal. Let me clear these things out. Now this source code is committed to GitHub. I've included the link in the video description. Now under resources, there's a text file called localstack.txt. So there are some commands which we'll be using to set up the queues and the topics. So I'll pick the first one to create the queue with the name my-queue. 
let's copy that and that let's run it in the local stack environment. So it has created a queue named my queue. Next, we'll create a SNS topic with the name my topic. And it has created that as well. Now, since the SNS topic is created, we want to have a subscriber to it, which is nothing but the SQS queue which we created, right? So let's so let's copy this command to subscribe. Now I'm for now time being omitting this last attributes um, parameter. We'll come back to it in a minute when we get there. But for now I'm just copying till this notification endpoint. So what this says is create a SNS subscription where the topic ARN is the topic that we just created and the subscriber protocol would be SQS with the endpoint of the my queue that we created a few moments back. So let me run this. So the subscription is created here. Now let's go back to our IntelliJ and try to run our application. So one thing with Spring Cloud AWS is whenever you bring up the application, it will try to create these queues and topics if it doesn't find those already on the environment. right? Uh, so this is fine for local development, but on production systems or UAT, right? You don't want your app to go and create a topic or a queue, right? So your IAM permissions will be such that the application doesn't have right to create or create a topic or create a queue, right? That those should be created beforehand and then the application should just go consume and publish messages onto those, right? So yeah, let's try to run this demo application. So I'll hit the run button here. So as you see, it says Tomcat has started on port 8080. Um, Actually, I forgot to show you the application.yaml. So here there are some Spring Boot properties which we need to set, like the AWS region, uh, the SQS endpoint, SNS endpoint. Now, since we are running the local stack on our Docker desktop, the URL would be localhost. And this is the standard port uh, on which the local stack runs, so 4566. And if you had noted the command we had used for the installation, right? Uh, let me go back to that. So in the docker run command, we had a dash p4566 colon 4566. So what that means is we, we, sh we would be able to access the local stack URL using the port 4, 4566 on our host, which is our local machine. And the other 4566 was the port within the local stack environment. So that's how we are able to specify the endpoint as local host uh, port and port 4566. So now that the application has started, uh, let's see what those two rest endpoints were. First is the send SQS message. So let's try to hit that. So in the browser, I'll try to hit the send SQS message URL. And if you see it printed message sent to SQS with the employee ID 130217, first name, last name. And let's check the output of the IntelliJ here it says message received and it's the same employee which we published right so so when we hit this send SQS message API endpoint all it did was send a message to the SQS queue where did we get this message received log from so that's from our listener here so while we published a message to SQS there was a listener continuously listening to that queue and once a message was published, uh, it realized, okay, there's a new message and it printed this logger.info, which says message received and the actual message. So the employee object, which we see on the browser, this was the published message on the SQS queue and the log here, which is the listener printing out uh, the employee object. So that was about SQS. Let's now try to publish a SNS notification and see what happens. So just for clarity, let me clear out the IntelliJ console output here and let's try publish SNS notification now. So if I hit the publish SNS notification now, 
you see the message change to message published to sns topic my topic and there's a new random employee details here with the id 2013 and name and last name let's see what happened on a intellij console so here again it printed a message received logger which is again from the sqs listener now since our sqs queue named my queue was subscribed to the sns notification what happened was when we published the sns notification the sns service published that message onto sqs queue and this listener picked up that message and started printing on the console but you may notice here the employee id first name last name everything seems to be null with the id as zero so something seems to have gone wrong here let's take a look what that issue is so what happens is when sns sends the message to its subscriber which is sqs in our case it wraps the message and adds its own set of metadata to the message uh, and then sends that payload to over to sqs it doesn't send it as a raw message now there's a flag in sns which reads raw message delivery and if that is true only it, then it sends the raw message as it is otherwise it will send a json string something like this right as you see here the real message as per this documentation that was sent on sns was this one this string which is this is a test message but when sns sends this payload to over to sqs it adds bunch of metadata like type message id topic arn subject etc now the java the spring cloud aws library fails to parse this right because of the extra attributes which it doesn't understand so that's where when it tries to print the employee object it was not able to construct the employee object out of these uh, attributes which it doesn't understand now somehow if we can only send the actual message from sns onto sqs the library will be able to successfully construct an employee object out of it now let's see how to do that now remember when we created the subscription i had omitted the last dash dash attributes raw message delivery as true all we need to do is when we create the subscription we need to pass this attribute to set the raw message delivery as true in that case sns will send the actual message as it is and not add any extra attributes of its own now since the subscription is already created let's try to update the subscription and add this attribute there so i'll copy this command to update the subscription attribute and add the raw message delivery the subscription arn would be the arn which it printed out when we had created the subscription right so i have updated the subscription now so if we again go back uh, let me just clear out this console for clarity now if i go back to the browser and hit this public as publish sns notification again you see there's an employee id with 77110333 employee id and now the message received gives us the same employee id this is because now the sns passed the employee object as it is without adding any metadata of its own so please remember this flag um, otherwise the spring cloud aws library it currently as of the recording of this video doesn't have a feature to parse the sns notification attributes so we need to pass this raw message delivery as true so that was about integrating spring boot with sqs and sns so let's do some cleanup on the environment that we have so if we do docker ps okay we are inside the local stack so let's do an exit let's do docker ps and let's delete this container docker rm then let's copy this and since the container is running we need to pass the force flag so that it will be deleted forcefully now again if we run docker ps now there's no container running so that's how you can integrate your spring boot application with sqs sns using spring cloud aws and just for your local testing right instead of actually integration integrating with the aws services you can speed up your development effort with installing the local stack and try it out the integration on your local environment thanks for watching the video